Hi, I'm Sunil Chilakuri from Refresh Dermatology in Houston, Texas. Thank you for joining me as we discuss the latest updates in cellulite, managing cellulite, and understanding what treatment options that we have today in 2022. When you look at my disclosure list, you can see I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of different companies to bring devices, technologies, and skincare to the market. With that, I'm going to be sharing some of the latest and greatest that we have currently. When you look at this picture of this beautiful 31-year-old woman who is referred to me from Los Angeles, when I saw these pictures, I said, there's nothing I can do. You don't have any cellulite. There's nothing to worry about. She's a professional ballerina. I asked her to send me any of her problem areas that are actually uh, visible in photographs. So she sent this. Now, this is a professional ballerina who is incredibly active, who has been noticing this type of cellulite or appearance for the last 17 years. So the question becomes really in our heads is what is cellulite? What can we do about it? And how can we treat the different aspects of it? When you think about cellulite itself, oftentimes we have a misconception that it's for a couple of people in the world or that they're overweight. And quite frankly, you can see those are just misconceptions. The data shows that there's approximately 80 to 90% of all women that are being affected by cellulite. Cellulite is just an appearance. Only 10% of men are affected by cellulite. I'm gonna be sharing with you in just a few minutes why that is from a physiologic standpoint. When you first determine the level of appearance of cellulite, you have to understand this grading system on zero to three. The patients that we can easily treat with today's technologies are grade zero to two. Grade three is much, much more difficult and you do need to be aware of whether there's actual elastin problems or any underlying syndromes that's there. When you look at the aspects of cellulite, you understand there's four basic components of cellulite, and each one of these needs to be addressed when present. The first one is the fibrous bands. So those are the bands that are gonna be pulling down on the external skin that's visible, creating that little bit of dimpling. The second thing is skin laxity. So if you have skin laxity, the way to test for this is have the patient bend slightly over on a table, use two fingers and just lightly pull up on that skin. If most of that dimpling or uneven appearance is resolved, then you know the majority of the component that's there is gonna be skin laxity. In general, most women between the age of 32 to 34 are not producing enough collagen and elastin to maintain the level that's being destroyed every single day just by living. So you see the visible effect from this usually in the early 40s or even in the late, late 30s, and that's going to show up on the skin itself. The third component is fat, and this is more simple to address. There's very easy ways to assess for that, not just with your two fingers, but from the appearance and the overall BMI of the patient. And finally, number four is fitness. So why fitness and what does that mean? It's actually the bulk of the muscle. So if you can increase the bulk of the muscle by one or two inches in circumference, you're gonna find that the skin has a better structure to sit upon and there's less visible wrinkling or dimpling that's seen in cellulite. When you look at this particular etiology, this is just a summary of what we just discussed. So there are enlarged fat chambers. There can be collagen fibers that are pulling down. That's the fibrous bands. You can have this loss of elasticity. Some is also gonna be uh, a side effect of poor blood flow that occurs as we continue to mature. And then of course, we talked about that fitness that's inside there. Earlier, I mentioned that there's gonna be two differences between men and women, and it's all from a physiologic standpoint. You can see that for men, most men have this crisscross that's seen inside that subcuticular structure. And as a result, it gives you the strength to the skin. So there's less visible cellulite or less visible waviness of the skin. In women, there tends to be individual chambers that are separated by these tiny little vertical mesh type pattern of fibrocytial uh, tissue that's there. And so as a result, you don't have that same strength to the underneath portion of the skin. When we talk about the treatment of cellulite, there's four main mechanisms that we can concern ourselves with. One, of course, is mechanical injury, injuries. 
and energies. And so that can be something as simple as subcision, as a, uh, physical destruction of the fiber spans, or some way to improve the overall collagen production. We have laser, we have subcision, and of course we have radio frequency. Let's address the first component, which is fat. And when you see this, we can understand that there's still the gold standard, which is liposuction, depending on that patient and what physical exam findings that you see. When you're talking about non-surgical modalities of fat destruction, all of them are going to use the same basic principle. You have an adipocyte and you either have to freeze it to desiccate that cell wall and then lead to apoptosis, or you can heat it. And if you heat it at a temperature between 41 to 47 degrees in general, and you can maintain that temperature for a minimum of 20 minutes, you're going to find that now you have programmed cell death or apoptosis. It doesn't matter what the device is. It's just maintaining that temperature at that level for a minimum of 20 minutes. Historically, we see that there's some things that don't seem to really work that well, at least in my opinion. I haven't found a cream or a lotion that works. From a mechanical standpoint, when you talk about these mechanical massagers, they don't do much, but if you do want to use something that's inexpensive, that will do something to the skin, get the fibroblast. Uh, it's called a fascia blaster, excuse me, fascia blaster, or you can also use something as simple as a stick quite frankly, get a piece of bark that's out there on the tree, cut it down, and then you can use it. And how does it work? It creates enough trauma to cause fiber, fibroblast activity. The other non-invasive modalities that we have are going to be ultrasound and radio frequency, as well as pressure wave or acoustic wave technology. When you talk about more of the invasive type components, you can also find that radio frequency and ultrasound can be applied subcutaneously using a device that looks like a wand or a cannula. Here's one example of a device that uses two of these modalities, both radio frequency combined with an acoustic wave device. And this brand or the name of this device is called M-Tone, E-M-T-O-N-E. -E. This is one of the latest releases. And what this does is uses a combination of heat while you're also using a pressure wave to increase the blood flow, break up some of those small fiber spans and improve the overall neocollagenesis. Again, this is controlled cellular injury. And as a result, you're just simply upregulating fibroblasts. The question becomes, is it better to have something that's a combined modality like this particular device, or can we use any radio frequency device and follow that or precede it with an acoustic wave device? And in this case, when we're talking about this particular device, uh, there's going to be two different types of uh, acoustic wave device or pressure wave device that are currently available in the US. One is brand named is the Z-Wave and the other one is called Cellutone. The Z-Wave more recently been, has been updated to allow you to have similar parameters to the Cellutone where you can change the frequency, the hertz and the pulse duration of each one of these types of acoustic wave devices. In terms of radio frequency, you can use any radio frequency device that allows you to help bulk heating. That's not the same thing as radio frequency microneedling. Yeah, hopefully you'll see a different lecture on that. And when you have that bulk heating, there's several devices that are in the market right now. One is Exless, one is uh, by Sinusure, and uh, another one is by InMode. All of these have bulk heating type devices. So there's Forma, there's Venus, there is uh, UltraShape and VelaShape. So all kinds of different things, including ThermiSmooth. So when this particular device was tested against that, we saw that the biggest difference when you're doing a combination therapy like this with both the radio frequency as well as the pressure wave, there's more uniform improvement of the overall blood flow to that particular area, in this case, treating the buttocks and the thighs. Several clinical trials have been performed to show an evidence that this is an actual improvement. And these are histologic studies. So when done with Brian Kenny and Penka uh, Yokonova, you can see that one arm or one side did only the radio frequency and compared that and followed by a serious uh, serial uh, pressure wave. And the other one was the combined device. And you can see with the combined device, when in comparison, there's a 59% improvement uh, as compared to the control with collagen, 64% improvement on the last end. And overall, there was a 44% improvement of the overall thickness of that skin, which again, is going to improve the quality and texture of the skin, as well as decrease some of those little waviness that you're going to see cutaneously. 
Another study that was done in Germany with uh, Klaus Fritz, a good friend of ours, uh, involved 30 patients here having both thigh and buttock cellulite. And again, you can see what's here. What they showed in this particular uh, this particular study is by using a FLIR camera, which is a forward looking infrared light, they showed that there's an actual overall improvement of the blood flow, which makes perfect sense for again, from a pathophysiologic standpoint, you're having that controlled cellular damage, you're going to improve the neocollagenesis by improving blood flow, keeping the inflammatory response inside that area and upregulating the activity of the fibroblast. And here's just the ultrasound uh, conclusion showing that there's an improvement in the overall thickness. You can see from the FLIR camera, even at three months, there's an overall uniform improvement of the blood flow of both buttocks in this patient. So in summary, we know that there's a difference in using this combined effect. And again, when you're looking at adding something like this to your practice, you have to make sure, does it make financial sense to allow that? Here's a very typical patient. She's a 44-year-old lovely young lady that comes to our practice. She's extremely physically fit, as you can even see from the left side, but she's bothered by this slight bit of dimpling or textural unevenness. And this is a, a typical change that occurs three months after four treatments of weekly M-tone. What else do we have? Well, we can talk about focus radio frequency that can also improve skin laxity and subcision. Remember earlier, we we're talking about bulk heating. This is different. Now we're talking about focused radio frequency, and this is placed into the skin by using a, uh, a, a needles that go inside the skin. This particular device, and you can use any RF microneedling device, I'm going to talk about one in particular because the unique aspect of in-modes, uh, it's called uh, Morpheus, Morpheus 8, is that allows eight uh, millimeters of depth of overall heat. The needles themselves penetrate to seven millimeters, and there's an extension of that heat to another millimeter beyond uh, deep as well as broadness of this muscle, of this uh, device. The biggest advantage of this particular device is it has a wide footprint, so you can treat a large area pretty quickly. Another advantage of this particular device, it uses something called a burst mode, B-U-R-S-T. And if you trigger just one time, you pull the trigger once, it can either fire three different depths or two different depths, depending on what your settings are that you're utilizing inside there. We also have plain old fashioned subcision. So when you're talking about subcision, there's both mechanical and now lately there's actual chemical way to create subcision. Uh, and one of those original ones that's been out there for a long period of time is this tissue stabilized guiding uh, subcision. And this is Selfina. So this device goes over that dimple and you can use it to just subsize by swinging in this little arm around there. Another thing that we can do is use a very inexpensive option. And this is using a combination of mechanical subcision while simultaneously placing PLLA, so poly -L lactic acid that's inside here to bring in more fibroblast activity. And I describe it like fertilizing the lawn. You're placing the seeds there, you're allowing the body to go ahead and grow those seeds and improve that overall area. This first step, you can see I'm marking out this lovely young lady. She's 39, she's super fit that you can see here, but she has been struggling with cellulite since the age of 14. And she's seen several plastic surgeons to see about can she get liposuction? She's too thin. So once we identify those areas, we mark them out. We're just doing a simple subcision while we're placing the PLLA. And again, the subcision is, is from multiple angles and you wanna think about it like a clock face. So the first time with your injection point, you're gonna go ahead and go from a nine o'clock to a three o'clock position. And then perpendicular to that from a six o'clock to 12 o'clock position. Here in this case, I'm using some mechanical uh, um, a pressure wave device. You can use, again, there's two in the market right now. If you're talking about a single pressure wave, that's the Z-wave, the Cellutone. Um, and now we've advanced so we can use the M-tone. So you can see a nice change that's there. The chemical way of doing this is by using collagenase. So collagenase, clostridium, Histolyticum is also known as quo, 
QWO. So very, very simple mechanism. It's, it's incredibly easy to use. And I'm gonna show a demonstration that this is a very short video here. So you have to remove these two applications away from the fridge about 15 minutes before you actually start treating the patient. You mark out those fibrous bands and you're gonna inject perpendicular applying 0.1 cc's of the product and then go 0.1 cc's at a 45 degree angle caudal as well as cephalic, and then you can massage it in. This is a very, very simple mechanism. It's very quick type procedure, but there's gonna be a significant side effect. And what is that side effect? Well, it's massive bruising. And this is an expectation. And this is what the buttock should look like at about 72 hours. Why? Because inside each one of those fibrous bands that's pulling down on the external skin, there's actually an arterial and a venule. And because this is a chemical destruction of that collagen that's keeping that fibrous band in place, now you have a shearing force that opens up the arterial and the venule and allows this massive amount of bruising. If you don't see this bruising, then you're not actually injecting properly into, the pro into that area, or that's not the underlying cause of that fibrous band. Originally, we were finding that people were having what they're describing as staining that can last a year to a year and a half. And with the initial studies that were done by Quo, by Endo, we saw that we didn't see that much staining that's lasting that period of time. But in real life, since it's been released about a year ago, we saw that the staining is quite common. We figured out a way, or at least our office, we figured out a way to utilize an energy-based device to minimize or resolve all of the bruising within seven to 10 days on average. And this was a, with a prospective study utilizing 25 patients, and I'm gonna describe that to you. So here's the time course of one patient that I'm gonna share with you. And you can see here, what we typically do is we wait about three days, two and a half to three days after the injection. So post-op day three, post-op day four, you can apply the combined pressure wave with radio frequency. If you don't have the combined modality, use the simple pressure wave, to improve. If you have hopefully both the pressure wave as well as an RF bulk heating device, you can use one after another. Which one to use first? Typically, I'll use the acoustic wave first and then apply the radio frequency heat. But that has not been tested, so I can't tell you that works any better. In using the combination therapy with that M-tone that we discussed earlier, you can see that this is 24 hours after a single treatment. So what it's done, it's improved the blood flow to remove those extravasated red blood cells and make that central portion clear. This is a day after, two days after the second treatment using that same combined radio frequency and pressure wave device, the M-tone. And you can see what's occurred here. And then this is 48 hours after the third treatment. So they're spaced about two days apart. So consistently we're finding in that prospective study of 25 patients that if this is performed within two days after the injection of the clostridium, we're gonna have full resolution within seven to 10 days on average. I hope that you'll DM me and ask me any questions that you have. Here's my contact information. Reach out to me on Instagram. If you DM me, it's just at RefreshDerm and we'd be honored, I would be honored to answer any questions that you have. Again, I'm Sunil Chilakuri, board certified dermatologist from Houston, Texas.